Hello and welcome to another episode of Around the Verse. I'm Sandy Gardner. And I'm Chris Roberts. This week we're checking in with Nick Elms and various development teams for another Squadron 42 project update. Yeah, we're going to take a look at some key tech and assets being built out for the game. Take it away, Nick. Hi everyone, welcome to another Squadron 42 project update. As we get closer to our target goals for the game, it becomes harder and harder to show you what we've completed without revealing key parts of the story. This month, we will attempt to give you a glimpse of our progress without revealing any spoilers. Here to join us, Lieutenant. For Squadron 42, we have a, a, a number of feature teams which work on a variety of uh, aspects of the gameplay, the technology that we need to develop the game, everything from the content side of things through to in-development technology and technology that doesn't exist yet. You know, when you put these disciplines together and you put these teams together and they're sat down on the same floor, the knowledge that they share and the speed at which these people can work together is remarkably better. In a lot of places you still have, you know, an engineering team and then they sit together on their own separate to the animation team or separate to the design team. And, and, and you know, while that method of development can work, it's a lot slower and it's also a lot less involved as well. But if you have a feature team, if you have this dedicated strike team, and you have a member from each of those disciplines together, then you, know, you bring those features to completion together. Combat, as always, has been a strong focus for our feature teams. This month, we've been working on mobility and actions like vaulting, jumping, and climbing to make sure that shooting and exploration are fluid and fun. So something we do in game at the moment is that we, we have two different types of animations. We have entity driven animations and we have animation driven animations. We've kind of mixed these up in the past and we're really shooting for entity driven animation now where the player is in full control of what they're doing when they stop pressing. You know, if they stop pressing forward, they stop immediately. If they start pressing a button, they start immediately. So we want the player to feel like they're in full control of everything. The other mechanics like vaulting and jumping, mantling, things like that are kind of movement mechanics that we have had work on but we've not had time to fully finish out yet. So uh, we wanted to revisit all of that, make sure we've got all finished assets. It feels good from the first person perspective and it still looks really good in third as well. The actor team have been refining the idle system for NPCs. This makes sure that they automatically pick the most suitable idle animation for their current situation and environment. The main idea is that uh, no matter what situation a character is in, as soon as they have no in instructions from the behavior, the idle system will take over and will play appropriate animation, idle animation or fidget for this given context. We changed the setup in a way that now it's the idle poses are bound together with the animation and it's all set up in mannequin. This makes it much easier for the designers in conversations previously, designers were the people who needed to specifically request every single idle animation. Now they don't need to worry about any idle poses, they, they only need to request the animations and conversation lines they need. And this system, which is kind of running underneath, will take care of this. The engineering team have also been working on our procedural inverse kinematic tech with the goal being to smooth out blending while retaining as much of the actor's performance as possible. Procedural solutions we've been talking about is uh, the ways we use the game code to change the animated poses. Some of the things we've been uh, working on really is to procedurally blend between a lot of different grip poses to get uh, the shape on the hands we want to uh, better connect with items you're holding, depending on where you hold them and the size of the item. We also use uh, IK to solve different constraints we want to keep. So if we want the hand to be in a certain position but without the uh, spine to deform and use the uh, entire uh, length of the arm. One thing we've been looking at is uh, a, a unique IK solver specifically to improve the look of the arm to let more of the animation be there even though we're using um, IK to move the hand to better fit with the uh, object you're in interacting with. The problem is specifically with like IK solvers is you could solve a few cases and then you get this one edge case that just flips the whole thing out. It's just a lot of maths involved. <laughs> I'm really happy with the progress we've been making. I mean, a lot of the things we've kind of uh, worked out in theory, because a lot of procedural things you kind of go like, oh, this could work procedurally, has actually sort of panned out in game. The actor feature team has made a lot of progress this month. The player is now able to examine objects and manipulate them with their hands to find out new information. Another thing that we, um, we've been working on that we want to be able to do with items is inspect them. So it's a new state that we've added. The ability to be able to 
uh, bring them up into your central view and then use the mouse to manipulate them. Um, so you can kind of look around them. And what that allows us to do is, or allows the player to do, should I say, is focus on attachment ports to be able to, um, in the future, we'll be able to interact with those, swap out different attachments like scopes and that kind of thing. So the main focus over the past couple of sprints has been um, a lot of visual uh, refinement, so um, polishing animations, that kind of thing, making everything look better for when you're picking things up, placing them down, um, and also obviously adding in this sort of inspect state and all these different grips, so the, the amount of things that you can pick up and interact with in the environment has kind of just expanded, just increasing the immersion, so everything's looking, yeah, pretty good. The weapons team are starting to bring some of the tech previously seen in the alien ships to their weapons. The Xi'an rocket launcher is one of the first weapons out of the blocks and is shaping up nicely. So this is the Xi'an Kahex rocket launcher that is part of Squadron 42. It was really interesting to work on it since it was the first alien weapon uh, we've been working on and it was definitely something new for us. I was responsible for the in-game model, texturing and shaders. We added an animated glow effect, uh, Xi'an decals and made an overall polish pass to it. So all materials, textures and animations were fine-tuned. Uh, we tried to make the weapon look really heavy and it will be about the same size as the railgun. The VFX team have been prototyping procedural soft body deformation to create amazing destruction assets. Impressively, this is accomplished with much less art resource than usual. This month we've worked out how to do, uh, take a standard wall asset, uh, break it up and do apply a soft body simulation to it and then rig it for games so we can do deformation uh, and like shearing of metal in game. This uh, method will be used for the cinematic sequences where you see uh, either a ship uh, bend or crumple or a piece of metal like, such as a metal wall uh, shear and break apart. This method is like a cheaper method of doing uh, this bending uh, process. We have another uh, method for doing this, which is the GeomCache uh, Alembic uh, way, but that is a lot more expensive. There's a lot more uh, memory resources that is used there. So in conjunction with that and uh, this method here, we can blend these two together to make very uh, interesting and detailed destruction simulations. It's not often that we get to associate a team's work with the word rubbish, but this month we've seen the props team deliver loads of detailed work on the clutter and scrap that's built around the various abandoned spaces in the verse. Recently I've been working on scrap piles and these have been using a mix of uh, a substance designer and ZBrush pipeline. They make use of several techniques, uh, one of which is using tiling textures and the other one is using unique props. I start by sculpting assets inside of ZBrush which are then taken into designer and um, splattered around and distributed in a procedural manner and this works well from both an artistic and a production standpoint. This has been a, quite an interesting set to work on. It's been a mix of location work and regular props work. This asset type is blended in with both props and environment type work and this works well from both an artistic and a production standpoint. The Vandal Race continues to get their look, animation and behaviour fleshed out. Focus this month has been on their basic costumes and primary weapons. We're working on the Vandal armor. We're tying in their look a lot with the ships uh, and we're also going to see their culture kind of combined with a couple other cultures because the Vandal like to kind of bring in influences from other cultures but they still have a really unique look. We're also working on the weapons. The Vandal don't use traditional weapons. They don't use rifles and stuff. The main thing that we're focusing on having them use is a spear. So they have a spear which has multiple different types of states in it, a firing state, a collapse state. Uh, they also have a very close quarters knife. Uh, the knife actually plays pretty tightly into the lore of the Vandal because it kind of ties who they are as a species. You know, we're working on different types of things and really just fleshing out the culture of the Vandal as a whole. That's all for this month's update. Until next time, back to you, Sandy and Chris. Thanks everyone. In Star Citizen News, the live release of Alpha 3.2 is right around the corner. Yes, that's right. And thanks to all our PT groups for continuing to get the patch ready for prime time. With the all new mining mechanic, new weapons and various quality life improvements, you're definitely going to want to jump into the PU and check out what 3.2 has to offer. There will also be newly flyable ships, of course. The Aegeus, Eclipse, Vandal Blade, Origin 600i and the Anvil Hurricane will soon be flyable in-game. Yes, as well as the totally redesigned Aegeus Avenger line, 
which joins the Fireball roster with this release. And with the debut of mining in 3.2, the Prospector has returned to the Pledge Store. Those of you that pledge for the Drake Vulture will also get the Prospector as a loanership. Or you can use a newly implemented group system to find a friend with a Prospector and convince them to lend it to you. Or that. Check out Reverse the Verse live on Twitch tomorrow for our monthly subscriber town hall episode and maybe a special appearance by Chris. Is that true? Well, you're just going to have to tune in to find out. Uh, thanks to all our subscribers for sponsoring the shows. And thank you to all of our backers for your continued support and enthusiasm. We hope you're excited for Alpha 3.2. Yes. Until next week. We will see you around the verse. Around the verse. Can we, do we have to reset or can we make up our no. own? And restart. That's a cut. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Around the Verse. I am Sky Roberts, the daughter of Christopher Roberts and Sandy Gardner. Hi, my name is Ray Roberts. But first, we have to check in with Rocky.